Our problem now is indefinite integrals of the form secant to a power times tangent to a power, where the powers are non-negative integers. What's going to drive all of our tricks will be the equation 1 plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared. Recall how do we get this? I start with cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. I'm going to divide through by cosine squared. That's going to give me 1 plus sine over cosine squared, which is tangent squared. And then 1 over cosine squared. 1 over cosine is secant, so I get a secant squared here. So there's my identity. We're going to have five cases, two of which I'm going to do in this part. Our first case is going to be m even. If I have m even, I'm going to set aside a secant squared. With what's left over, I'm going to convert that to tangent using the equation secant squared equals 1 plus tangent squared. So if secant starts out even, I take 2 away. What's left over is even. So it can be written as secant squared to some other power. Once everything's in tangent, we just u sub out by u equals tangent x, and then we follow our nose. For the second case, where n is odd, so I'm looking at an odd power of tangent, I want to set aside a tangent x. Whatever's left over, I want to convert to secant x. So that's going to be by using this equation here. If I pull one tangent off, I'm left with tangent to an even power. And so I can use this equation here to get everything in secant if I put the one to the other side. I'm going to use sub out u equal to secant x, and then I can follow my nose. The n is even, m equal to zero. So in this case, I'm looking at tangent to an even power. There's going to be a special trick for that, which we'll see later. If I have m odd and n zero, so I'm looking at just secant to an odd power. Again, we're going to use a special trick. It'll be integration by parts. And we've already seen the case of secant cubed in part 6 of 8.2. So we'll do those after I finish these. And then when all else fails, you convert to sine and cosine and see if you can do anything with it. Let's take a look at first example. So I'm going to have secant to the sixth power. That's an even number up here. So the trick is we set two of them aside and turn what's left over into tangent. So what will happen? We're left with secant to the fourth. Secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. So we're going to have two of those. So this turns into the square of that quantity. Now I'm going to substitute out tangent. So I let u be equal to tangent x. du is secant squared x dx. We substitute in, and I have 1 plus u squared squared times du. Expand this, I get 1 plus 2u squared plus u to the fourth du. Everything is in terms of u, so we can do an antiderivative. So I'm just going to add 1, flip it over, and then where I have the 1, I'm going to put a u. That gives me this. And now I'm just going to put in a tangent x wherever I had a u, and that gives me my answer. Of course, we check this. Checking is just going to be unraveling all the tricks going up the board. So really quickly, we're going to take the derivative of each of these. So this is just going to give me a secant squared. And then this is going to be chain rule on both of these. Every term is going to produce a secant squared, so I can factor that out. What's going to be left over is going to be 1 plus 2 tan squared x plus 10 to the fourth x, which is just 1 plus tan squared x quantity squared. We know the inside here is secant squared. So that's going to give me a secant to the 4. Matched up with my original secant squared gives me a secant to the 6. So the check works. Let's look at another with our first case. Indefinite integral of secant to the 4th power, tan squared dx. So power on secant is even. So we're going to take 2, set them aside. That leaves me with tan squared x, secant squared x. We're going to get rid of the secant squared because we want to eventually do a substitution with tangent. So I can rewrite this as 1 plus tan squared. Now I'm going to do u equals tan x as a substitution. du is secant squared dx, and let's see what happens. So we're going to have u squared, 1 plus u squared, du. Since secant squared dx is equal to du, it comes right out. Then I'm looking at indefinite integral of u squared plus u to the fourth du. So we know how to do that. It's just add 1, flip it over. 
And then where I have a U, I put in a tangent X and my answer drops out. Of course, I check my work. So this is just going to be chain rule. The three comes down, leaving me with a tan squared. We multiply by secant squared. The five comes down, leaving me with 10 to the fourth. We multiply by derivative of the inside, which is secant squared. And then I just follow my nose. I pull out a tangent squared. What will be left over is a one plus tangent squared, but we know that that's secant squared. So that's going to turn into a secant squared times a secant squared. Gives me secant to a fourth. And our answer checks out. Let's look at case two now. I'm going to have tan cubed secant squared x dx. We actually have options here. If you notice, we have an even power in the secant, so I could set that aside and try, so, well, if I set this aside, I don't need to substitute anything because this is already completely in powers of tangent, and we would do a u equal tan x to get to our answer. Or I have an odd power of tangent. I could set aside a tangent, convert this into secant, and see what happens. So we're actually going to do both, and then we'll see if the answers match up, and if they don't, we'll explain why they don't. But let's do the one where I'm in case two. So I'm going to set aside one of my tangents. So I'll put that off to the side here. What will be left over is a tangent squared. So I'm going to want to convert that into secant, because in this case, the substitution is going to be u equals secant x. So that's going to mean tangent squared becomes secant squared x minus 1. Now, with a little bit of foresight, you could get this by just your straight substitution, and it'll come out. But let's take a look at what was, we're expecting to happen. I'm going to do u equals secant x. So I'm going to want the derivative. Derivative of secant is secant tangent. So I'll just slide a secant over. You don't need to do it this way. It'll wash out when you do your substitution. We just want to see what happens. So that's going to leave one secant over on this side. So note, if we let u be equal to secant x, du is secant x tan x dx. This term goes straight to du. And then I have u and u squared minus 1. Multiply through gets me u cubed minus u, du. This is completely in u. So now I can just take my antiderivative by add 1, flip it over. We do that, and we're left with this. And then I'm going to put in wherever I have a u, I put a secant. And so that gives me my answer. What's the other way of doing this? Well, we could have just went straight to u equals tangent of x. What happens here? Well, then du is going to be equal to secant squared x dx. We're going to have u cubed, which is just going to go to add one flip it over, one fourth, 10 to the fourth x plus a constant. And we could stop there. But the idea is we want to connect this to our old answer. So notice that tangent squared is secant squared x minus 1. So I'll stick that in here, and notice what happens. I expand. That's going to give me 1 fourth secant 4 power minus a half secant squared minus a quarter. Actually, that's plus a quarter plus a constant. These things are almost the same, but not quite. What's the difference? Well, the difference is in we have an extra quarter on this answer. But that's fine because our answer is only an antiderivative, which means any other antiderivative has to agree up to a constant. Here, these two agree up to a constant. So this is going to be the check on my work. Rather than looking for box prime, I just find it in two different ways, show they're the same. And just note, we have a little bit of a glitch here, but that's just fine because everything else is matching up.